Good morning. I'm Scott Davis from TechWise Group, and this is The Morning Breach. Today is National Superhero Day. Originally thought up by employees of Marvel Comics in 1995, today honors both fictional and real-life superheroes like those on the front lines fighting COVID-19 coronavirus. So today, I thank you personally. Cavaliero IT Solutions, a nationwide IT solutions provider, announced a data breach on April 24th that unauthorized persons were using imposter domain names to conduct email phishing directed at their customers. There was also unauthorized access to multiple Cavaliero accounts as well as internal file manage management systems. Customer names, dates of birth, phone numbers, email addresses, usernames, passwords, financial, account information, and demographic data was potentially accessed during the incident. If you tuned in yesterday, you remember the conversation of malicious domain names being recorded at a record pace with as many as 16,000 domains registered for COVID-19 coronavirus since January alone. So here is a perfect example of what can happen even to experienced IT professionals when malicious domains are used. ExecuFarm reported, reported on March 13th ransomware, a ransomware attack that exposed employee personal data, including social security numbers, taxpayer and bank account information, passports, credit card data. In addition, the attackers also posted the stolen data on the dark web after the attack. This is becoming more and more common, like I said yesterday. Affected employees will be provided one year of identity monitoring. Civic Smart, a Milwaukee firm that sells parking meters, was also breached in March. A blog post in the dark web indicates as much as 159 gigs of data, including employee records, contracts, parking garage vendors, bank statements, credit card numbers for the end users were posted online. The page was later updated to indicate that Civic Smart paid the ransom and the files were then taken offline. There's one thing that we always have to remember when dealing with cyber criminals is there is never a guarantee that the criminals here actually deleted the data that they took locally. There's never a guarantee if you pay the ransom that you'll get your data. There's never a guarantee if you pay the ransom that the data will permanently be removed. If it was already posted online, it is probably downloaded and it is somewhere. Oshkosh City Hall got hit with a ransomware attack, which cost the city approximately $150,000 outside of worker production, which is an organization's largest expense when recovering from ransomware. So what I want you to think about here is you get ransomware, your IT services, your vendors, you know, everyone gets together to recover and get your IT infrastructure back online. But what happens to the end users that you have working for you? How many thousands of dollars are, are being spent to just manage and monitor, or not really manage and monitor, but for having those users, those employees not being able to work? It's by far the largest expense. And so often when we talk about the cost of a breach, that number is not always included because it is such a variable number. Black Rose Lucy, Black Rose Lucy ransomware uh, hitting Android devices. Uh, it's claiming to hit you with a fine of $500 from the FBI, but Lucy is also equipped now to allow remote control of the device, make changes and install other applications. So even if you pay the ransom, Lucy could still be there on your mobile device. The other thing I wanna make note with the Black Rose Lucy is this is a ransomware as a service offering. So there are multiple groups that are publishing and pushing the Black Rose Lucy or the Lucy ransomware for Android devices. So it's not just one person, one attacker, it is that ransomware as a service type of, an, type of a, a business that the coders, the, the developer behind it is taking a percentage of all these different groups that are deploying it. So keep an eye out on your Android devices uh, and only download applications that are from known vendors. 
So I want to leave with some good news here. Um, the group behind Shade Ransomware, Shade Ransomware um, has been in operation since about 2014, mostly targeting Russia and Ukraine. But uh, the end of 2019, they started uh, shutting down their business, shutting down their operations. Um, and they officially have announced that they shut down their operations. And over their GitHub account, um, they released over 750,000 decryption keys and issued a nice apology. Uh, I don't think the apology does any good for those that have paid the ransom. But if you had Shade Ransomware or one of the variants of Shade Ransomware, chances are the decryption key and the software to decrypt it is now publicly available um, as the group behind Shade Ransomware has shut down their operations and is moving forward. So you listen every day and every day we're talking, you know, all these different security breaches. We're talking these organizations, we're talking this and that. What can you do as an organization to protect yourself? Well, ransomware has evolved. Um, last year, if I was doing this conversation with you, I would just say backups is what you need because backups is where it's at. But you need more than backups anymore. Uh, it starts with documentation. You need to sit down with your IT department. You have to analyze and understand where your documents are, what types of files you have, where they are. Look at who has access to what files. Um, lock down files to only those that need access to it. Uh, and be proactive in monitoring and maintaining what you have going on. If you are dealing with a lot of customer information, credit cards, social security numbers, health insurance, it is highly, highly advisable for you to have some sort of audit logging, uh, indicating what files were accessed, when they were accessed, and by who. If you don't have that, I highly recommend you look into acquiring that. Um, TechWise Group, we are partnered with a number of companies that do that type of service, and it is something that we can help you with. <coughs> Oh, excuse me. Uh, so look at you know file folder auditing um, as a great proactive tool that really is in place proactively to give you the report reactively if it happens. But then look at your security stack. What is your firewall? Does your firewall have current security? Is it advanced malware you know scanning capable? Um, <coughs> oh, excuse me again. So look at your firewall, look at your antivirus stack, look at the tools that you're deploying to protect your security services internally and analyze you know, what you're spending on that. You probably are not spending truly enough on IT security, uh, but you know, just look at what you're spending and document what you have and what is protecting and look for gaps in that security. That really should be the job of your IT vendor, your IT department on a regular basis. Backups are still absolutely crucial. If you don't have good backups, you can't recover from anything. You can't recover from a server crash, ransomware, or anything. But just having a backup isn't always enough because as we can talk about it, you can be down and the longer it takes for you to get those systems back online, the longer your employees are going to sit there and twiddle their thumbs and not know what to do. So know what your recovery time objective is, that's your RTO, and also understand the concept of business continuity versus just disaster recovery. If all you're doing is protecting yourself against disaster recovery, you could be down for three days, four days, a week, two weeks, until all of your data is back and available in an environment that you can work with. Now, with cloud computing, we can do things a lot faster in some situations. It all depends how you are set up to operate, to back up, and ultimately, what is the recovery plan? So those are all great questions to start asking your IT team, especially as we look to start getting back into the office here as the month of April comes to an end, and it looks like May is going to bring a lot of people from the home office back into the real office. So that's what I have for you today. 
Thank you all for tuning in. If you have any questions at all on ransomware, on any of the security breaches, if you have questions on what you can do to better protect yourself, please, please, please reach out, comment on the LinkedIn feed, the Facebook feed, Twitter. Let me know that you have questions uh, or also email me, scott at techwisegroup.com. I would love to talk to you, love to answer your questions for you. So that's what I have for you today. Have a great day and please take a moment and thank the superheroes that are among us, those that are fighting coronavirus, COVID-19, firefighters, police officers, the real superheroes that are here, that live with us every day. And, you know, also pay tribute to Batman, to Superman, uh, and all the other great superheroes that live in our imagination. Thank you and have a great day.